Hi everyone, the purpose of this video is to help you put uh, your loops together that you've learned and actually create a nested loop. So this is also a common task that we have to complete with VBA. Uh, often we're given data that doesn't always, uh, isn't always uniform. So this is a very simple example, but notice what we have here. We have six rows. Each row is represented by a customer. The problem is each customer has made a varying number of purchases, okay, or a varying number of orders. For example, Homer Simpson made one order on November 2nd, another on the 3rd, another on the 6th. Marge made only two orders, Bart none, Lisa one, and Maggie several. What we need, however, is a list of customers and their total amount, total dollar amount of the orders they've placed during this period. So here's where we need a nested loop. We need one loop to take us one at a time through each of the customers on this list. Why do we need a loop? Why can't we just total these up? Well, we need to be able to add extra data or new data and have the function work just the same and handle the new data without us making any changes to the code. So we need a loop that will go until it gets to the end of the list of customers automatically. Inside that loop though, we need a loop that goes through each of the orders and totals them up but stops when it gets to the last order. We don't want to waste time and have a loop to continue to run and run and run for a bunch of blank spots if they haven't made that many orders. So we only want to the inner loop to run as many times as it needs to to total up these orders. So here's an instance of where we need a nested loop. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and create this data so you can work uh, along with me. So go ahead and uh, make these uh, customers Throw in uh, any order dates and totals you want. Just make sure that, that it's jagged, meaning that they all have different numbers of orders. And uh, then continue the video. Okay, so you should have this page replicated now. So hit Alt F11, or open your VBA editor, and let insert a module to work on. Insert module. And as usual, we're going to begin top of the page with option explicit. And let's make the product called Simpsons oops, nested loop. Okay, as always, like I've told you guys many times, there's multiple ways to accomplish this. I want to show you how to use both for and do loops together because we can use either in this context. But what I need, first of all, is to keep track of my inputs and my outputs. So, for example, I know that we're going to need total as currency as an output. We need to keep track of what their total amount of, dollar, of dollars ordered is to print out right here. Which means we also are going to need, obviously, cut's name to print out over here next to it. We're going to keep track of those two things. Then I'm going to keep track of two markers or two counters or uh, incrementers. MR as integer, which will re represent the row that we're on. P is integer, which will obviously represent the column we're on. Next, um, let's go ahead and move our cursor to the beginning spot because I think I'm going to use some relative references this time. So let's select, actually there's only one sheet here and I've named my sheet nested loop. Uh, you can call it whatever you want. But let's go ahead and move our cursor range a1, beginning of the data. So range a1.select. By the way, I'm not going to spend time explaining some of the simpler concepts that have already been explained in previous videos. So as I go through, if you're feeling completely lost, you may need to watch some of the previous uh, simple loops videos and uh, the putting it all together videos three and four that cover uh, basic or single loops instead of getting into nested loops. Okay, so we've got our cursor in the right spot. Um, our output row, we need to keep track of that. I forgot to make um, uh, a variable for that, so let's come back up here and add a O row as an integer. And let's go ahead and initialize that to wherever we want to start keeping track or start printing out the output. In this case, we're going to start printing out the first customer down here on row 11. So our O row is equal 11. Okay. Let's move on now and create our first loop uh, right down here. 
Let's start with a for loop. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take for r is going to keep track of our row, and I'm going to initialize r to 2 because the first record is found right here on row 2. And I'm going to go to, well, what do I want to go to? I'm going to go to active cell dot end excel down dot what? What I want is dot row. Okay, now this is important that you understand this part, what I'm getting here. So in your other examples, we've said things like r equals 2 to 10 or something like that. I'm still plugging a number in here, but it's a dynamic number. What I'm saying is look at wherever the active cell is. So let's F8 and start running this. As soon as we run this line, active cell is now A1. So for r equals 2, 2, and I've said act as though you're going to hit control down. If we were to do that over here on the spreadsheet, we would end at row 6. However, we're not going to actually move our cell. We're just saying, if we were to hit control down, what row are we going to end on? Essentially, I'm saying for r equals 2 to 6. And the nice thing about using this code is, even if I add another row here to row 7, my code will automatically handle it, because if I were to hit control and down and there were another name here, and I hit control down, now it's going to return the number 7. So, essentially I'm saying for r equals 2 to 7. But I just want you to pay attention to what I'm returning here is the number of the row if I were to hit control down. But I'm not actually doing that. I'm not actually moving the cursor. Okay, so for r equals 2 to 7, uh, I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor along each row as I count so that I can use relative references. So what that means is I'm going to use actually cell r comma 2 that says start on row 2 but begin by putting your cursor on the first order. So r is 2 and column is 2. So right there um, dot select and move my cursor to that spot. Oops. Okay next now I'm going to have an inner loop that's going to move two at a time from here to here to here until it finds no more dates and add up each of these order totals. So instead of a for, I'm going to use a do until. I could use a for though. Um, I could use a for and say for c equals two and then step two cells at a time. Um, you may have done that in class. I'm going to use a do instead just to show you another way to do it. I'm going to say do until is empty selection. Okay, loop, but I need to actually move my cursor each time. So what I'm going to say is active cell, uh, oops, not value, to offset each time through, go ahead and move my cursor. Uh, I don't want to move down any rows, but I want to move over two columns because each order total, each order is found two columns apart. What I mean by that is I'm going to say, okay, or the cursor here. Actually, let me just show you. Uh, okay. F8. Oh, excuse me. I forgot an S here on cell. Syntax error. So right here, don't forget to add an S on cell. Stop that and try it again. F8. Oh, and <laughs> I've forgotten. Um, right here, I actually need to use. Oops. I'm not trying to grab the value. I'm actually trying to move the cursor. Offset dot select. Oops. Okay. Now that I fixed my bug, we'll try it one more time. Okay. Output row set to 11. Move the cursor to A1. So for R equals 2 to what will be 6. Um, move the cursor to column 2 or column B of that first row. Notice it's moved now from A1 to right here. Okay, and I'm going to do until that selection is empty. It's not empty, therefore it's going to go inside that loop. It's going to move over to, notice I'm now on D. Let's move this in so you can see it end. F8, I'm going, to, I'm going to go back into the loop again because that's still not empty. Moves over again, moves over again. Now it's empty, and it's going to evaluate this condition and find out that it's true. Therefore it's going to skip and go back to the outer loop. 
the outer loop says this next says now r is going to equal 3. So move the cursor to cells r uh, cells 3 comma 2 which is row 3 column b and then it's going to move across it goes down to the next row there's nothing there it moves again and then moves through each of these so now i've got my outer loop and my inner loop set up with iteration all i need to do is grab the names out of the order totals and print things out okay so where do i do that what i'd like to do is keep track of cus total right in here this total is going to equal, well, it's going to equal um, whatever we previously stored in cust total, not cost, which allows us to keep track through a loop what the running total is, plus where are we going to get the total from? Okay, when we get to this line, remember we've selected cells R, 2, so let's start with the first one. That means B2 will be selected. Therefore, we're going to be getting the total from whatever cell is next right here to the selected cell, which means active cell dot offset zero rows, comma, one column. So active cell, let me scoot this over so you can see it, dot offset zero rows, um, and one column dot value. Okay. Uh, let's see. So let's walk through that real quick. So you can see this work. Let's stop. F8 and play. So A1 selected. We enter the loop. Now B2 selected. We enter that loop. Cus total currently equals zero, and we know that because it's down here in our locals window. But now we're going to say it's going to equal itself zero plus whatever value is next to the currently selected cell. Okay. F8. Therefore, now cus total equals 3498. We increment, we move across to, enter the loop again. Now it's going to be, now our 34.98 moved to 36.76, that's correct. Okay, 251, that's the total for Homer. However, here's our problem. Now we exit the loop, we move to the next row. Okay, cus total is still 251.83. So before we move on to row, to the next row, we need to print out that previous total and then zero out cus total again. So let's take care of that. Okay, I'm going to go after this loop right here. And let's now work on printing out the total. I only want to print out the person's name, though, if their total is greater than zero. If their total is not greater than zero, I don't want them shown at all below here. I want to have clean data. So what I'm going to use is an if statement that says if cus total is greater than zero, then so that might end if. Now let's go ahead and output cus name, oh, which we haven't grabbed yet. Let's go back up here. We only need to get their name once we, when we enter each row. We don't need to re-grab their name each time we gather an order. Therefore, we're going to select their name inside this outer loop, but outside of the inner loop. And we can put it in, in a, a number of different places. Let's actually put it um, well, actually, we could just grab it right here. We should only bother getting their name if they have a total greater than zero. So let's put it inside this if statement. I'm always going to put it there, but this makes more sense. If the total is greater than zero, then let's go ahead and grab name. The name is going to be equal to whatever the active cell is, which is going to be row B, but end XL right. So whatever row we're on, hit control left, oh sorry, not XL right, XL left, and grab the value out of there, and that's going to be what their name is. Then, let's go ahead and print that in uh, cell, and we're keeping track of output row, whatever the output row is, and let's put their name in the first column, dot value equals cut name. Okay, let's copy that. In the second column, we want the total. Okay. And then my next question for you is, where should we zero out total? 
we could put it up here before we ever begin this loop and say test total equals zero. That way when this one when this loop is when this uh, outer loop is finished running and we start again, it's zero out zeroed out right here. However, it only makes sense to reset it to zero if it's not already zero. So how about we take it and move it down here? That way we'll only zero out and only execute, take up the time needed to execute this line if the cus totals not already zero. Okay, that takes care of that. One more thing we need to do. Let me show you. Let me hit stop. Let's start playing. Okay, as we go through, we grab Homer. Or first of all, we start totaling this up. Okay, we've got 251. We exit that loop. Because cus total is greater than zero, we're going to enter this loop, or enter this if statement. We're going to store the name. Uh-oh, looks like I've done it wrong. I set name equal to the value in output row move over one from active cell. Well, that's not right. I needed to act it. Oh, here's why. So look back here. Our cursor ends on an empty cell. If we were to hit control left, all it does is take us to the beginning of this chunk of data. So if we never grab name until the cursor is out here in a blank spot, then we can't just hit control right once or control left once. If our cursor is right here, ah, if our cursor is right here, we have to hit control left once, twice to get to their name. As a result, if we want to get their test name, we're going to have to hit active cell dot end x to the left dot end x l to the left. Again, dot value. So dot end dot end twice is the equivalent of moving it over twice. This will give us their name each time. Okay, let's stop this and try it one more time. Fate. We add up their total. This is looking correct. Now their name, here we go. Set properly to Homer Simpson. We print out their name. We print out their total. We zero out cus total. And we go back into the outer loop. We move to the next row. Okay, good. Now here's Marge Simpson's total. 45.98. Now we're up to 46.98. This cus total is greater than zero. Therefore, we grab the name Marge Simpson. And now we print out Marge Simpson's, oh, and her total. But what's the problem? We're overriding the previous output row. What we haven't done is increment O row. Here's O row, keeping track of where we want to begin printing out the output. We initialize it to row 11, but we need to add one. Each time we print out a name, we need to add one to it. So the next time it prints out on the next line. Where should we put that, out, that O row incrementer? Well, we could put it here, O row equals O row plus one. You can probably tell by the way I said that, that that's not actually the best, that's not correct. Let me just hit play and you'll see why. Look at what it's done over here. We only printed out a name and a total if that total is greater than zero. And since Bart's was zero, we didn't print it out. Well, in our output, we don't want to have any blank lines. So where should we put this? Well, we only want to increment, increment O row if we actually printed out the customer's name and total, which means it's going to go inside this if block. Now, only if it's greater than zero will we move the output row down one spot. So let's delete this out of here. Come back. Hit play one more time. There we go. Each name one time with their order total right here. These numbers should all add up, and there's our nested loop. So on your final exam, you will likely get one question uh, somewhat close to this degree of difficulty. All right, let your instructor know if you have any questions about this example. Thanks.